Hello ladies and gentlemen. So the video you are about to see is an electrical video. And before any electrical work, if you're not comfortable, capable, or not up to the task and don't feel right about it, please get enough a, a professional electrician to do the work. Uh, nobody needs to go out of the way and hurt themselves. Don't be a hero. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. If you are up to this task and you do know what you're doing, please note, perform safe isolation before doing any electrical work. Go to the breaker, turn the breaker off, go to the source, make sure there's no power going to the outlet, go to the outlet, you will test the outlet using three methods. You can use a voltage tester, you can use a voltage meter, or you can use an old-fashioned pigtail. Or if you don't have any of these, you can plug any um, appliance into the receptacle that's on that circuit to make sure that power is off because you need to make sure that there's never stray voltage in the line because it will kill you and you don't want that. So please perform safe isolation. I wouldn't count on one of these. I would always back one of those up with a pigtail or a meter. Um, Remember, this is kind of your first, this is kind of your, like, first defense in a way, but, you know, don't count on them because they can malfunction. So, without further ado, here is the video. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, what's going on? Mike here. So, I'm going to be doing a video today on uh, how to wire a switch. Now, I haven't done a how-to video in a long time, but I figured, you know, uh, I want to make sure my YouTube channel still has, um, you know, it's a good amount of videos on it, and I uh, feel that I need to step up my game and make a little more how-to videos. Um, I do a lot of videos on, like, things I do, which, you know, a lot of people find interesting, but I would like to do and get back into some of the how-to videos to help people out. Now, you got to understand, when it comes to how-to videos, um, everything isn't going to be the way it's going to be for you. This is how it is for me. This is going to be a video on how to wire a single pole switch. The exhaust fan I will be doing it on does not have a ground wire. It does, but it it's up to a point. When I built this fan, I wasn't, you know, I was a, I was still a teenager in high school. So, you know, I wasn't thinking back then, but now I know it needs a ground wire. So, you know, I don't need a thousand electricians coming on this video. Thank you very much. I understand it doesn't have a ground wire. You know, we don't need to put that in the comments. Uh, but of course, you know, we'll go over ground wires and such and such. And um, when I have the time, I will redo this, but for now, it's fine. Um, another thing is because this deals with electricity, this is, um, you know, this is not for everybody. If you do not know what you're doing or you're uncomfortable, please do not do it. Consult a professional electrician. Okay? You know, I'm in New York City. Our codes here are different than codes in Nebraska or Wyoming or California or wherever you may be. So, you know, things here may not be up to spec. So, again, you know, it has to do with codes as well. So anything you see in this video, if you're going to attempt, it's up to your own risk. But if you feel uncomfortable doing electrical work, please consult a professional electrician because I'm not going to be held responsible and no YouTuber is going to be held responsible. So, without further ado, I will show you how to wire a single pole switch on this exhaust fan. So, here we go. Alright, so this is the exhaust fan here. I built this back in 2010-2011. And uh, it was just an ordinary window fan for my house, uh, the house we had in Jersey that we now sold. So I'm going to take this switch apart and I'm going to show you how to wire it. This BX cable here uh, actually did not come with a ground in it. And I tried to run a ground through this, but it's too tight. So it's grounded, the box is grounded, the switch is grounded, it's grounded up to here. This has a shield in it. Um, but in time... I'm going to take this piece of BX out and I'm going to run a new piece of BX in where I can put a ground wire to the fan because of course the fan has to be grounded, it's metal. So I just wanted to go over that with you before I get into this. Um, and this is the switch. Again, it's going to be different from your application. You may be working inside of a wall or you may be working in an attic or in a house or wherever, but this is just a simple how-to video on the single pole switch. So I'm gonna take this apart 
and we're going to start from scratch and I'm going to show you how to do it. Alright guys, so here's our switch box open and you know, now again you have to remember that I built this way back in high school so I wasn't, you know, the sharpest with electricity at the time with electrical work so you can already see there's some things that are wrong. Um, one is that the wires coming from the BX are way too short. You always want to give yourself enough slack out of the box so you don't have to end up putting these like little jumper wires on. And um, you know, of course I could take this and do it the proper way and redo all of it, but it's a lot of work and it works for now. And it's my fan. So I'm reliable for it, I'm responsible for it. So, you know, that's that. Um the ground wire, again, there should be a ground wire going through this to the motor, which, you know, I will add. I just need to get the time to do it. Luckily, you know, this is the weekend and I have time to fit in a video in between calls. So, now the way a single pole switch works. Here is a single pole switch. You have a ground, and there's two screws right here, and they're brass. These are for the hot legs. This is currently in the off position. This is on, of course. You know, switch is a switch. What you're doing is you're cutting the power on the hot leg, which black is always your hot, your your incoming power. And white is neutral, which gets wire nutted to the neutral, which goes right to the motor, which you'll also notice it's too tight. You should never have to, like, do it like that. That's just not how you want to have it. Um... And basically what you're doing is you're cutting power on the hot leg. And when you cut power on the hot leg, you know, obviously it'll cut power to the motor or it'll give power to the motor. And that's why this is a single pole switch. If this was a 220 motor, it would be a uh, double pole switch. So that means you would also have brass screws on this side for one hot leg and the other hot leg. Um, and, and that's how, you know, you do it. You always cut the uh, hot leg not the neutral. Think of it as your hot being a feed of like, you know, someone once said that you could um, say it as like electricity is like the flow of water to where this is the water coming in and this is the water going out. So you're just cutting the flow of water off with the switch to say the sprinkler. And then, you know, just pretend that that sprinkler, whatever, the water goes back. And that's what the neutral's for. The water's going back. The electricity is going back. <clears throat> so, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to wire it. Of course, the white wire is your neutral wire. That gets wire nutted to the outgoing neutral wire. The incoming neutral gets wire nutted to the outgoing neutral. And usually, you know, it can be different in different situations. You could have both. You could have the incoming and outgoing come in the same uh, place at the top, it could be at the bottom, it could be at the side, it could be simple like this to where your incoming power is at the bottom and the outgoing power is at the top, where everything could be at the top. So, you know, depending on the situation, it's going to be different. So, I'm going to get my camera set up and uh, I'm going to show you how to wire it. Okay, now doing this without hopefully not dropping the phone. Okay. Got my 6 in one. So, we're going to start with the incoming hot wire, which is going to go on the bottom screw. Now, you can, if your switch does not come with these little tabs, which you can slip the wire under, you have to take off enough insulation and you have to wrap that wire around the screw in the direction that the screw turns. If you do it in the opposite direction, the wire will not hold tightly. You always want the wire to hold tightly. So I'm going to slip this guy underneath here, like so. Can be a little tricky. You may have to undo it just a little bit. Because you want to make sure that whole wire get, is underneath that metal tab. Like so. Okay? Now, push it under there. You don't want any of those little uh, copper parts hanging out. Good thing the phone didn't fall, I would have had to redo, redo the video. So that's tight. Now, something like that's okay. I'm going to put electrical tape around this, which you always should do. 
Alright. Wanna make sure that's cranked down. Okay, now we're out, going hot. There's this little blue wire, which I had to use as like a little jumper because I didn't have enough slack when I um, built this fan. So I'm gonna back out this screw. Make sure that's a little stuck. So make sure that comes out. Make sure I'm able to get my wire under there, which I am. That's all right. That. Tighten it down, hold the wire. You don't want the wire to fall out while you're tightening the screw down. All right, that's in place. That's okay. A little strand coming out. It's not gonna hurt anything. We're gonna put electrical tape around that. So now I'm gonna put electrical tape around this. Get a nice piece of electrical tape. Make sure it goes all the way around so that you can tighten it down. You should always do this so nothing can accidentally touch in. The metal box or rub up against something you know god forbid any of that would happen okay now i'm leaving room for my ground wire which i'm going to put on last but i want to make sure this is tight when i wrap it around just like so okay that's tight they're over that here's our ground wire it's going to go on the green grounding screw which is going to ground the metal switch which will also ground the face of the uh, plate now when putting a wire around the screw, you want to have a little more slack, a little more off than this is now. But when you put it around, okay, go like that, and it's always going to be in the direction that the screw is going to turn, so it will be tight. Like so. All right. Now, I'm going to put this switch back in place. Now also, you see these wire nuts, the ground one, they, they all, regardless, should have black tape around them, and that's to prevent any wires from slipping out and shorting out the box. So, for the hot, you know, again, this is a little tight, but I, I will get uh, black tape around these wire nuts here. It's black electrical tape, it's very important to have. So, as best as I can, I'm going to get it around there. You want to get it on the wires and on the bottom of the, uh, the wire nut so nothing can accidentally fall out. Okay, now we're going to do the neutral, which is really tough because it's all the way in the bottom of the box, but I can work it in there like so that up and over like that push you out of the way see this, this can be very tricky which this is why you always give yourself a lot of slack so use this as a lesson ladies and gentlemen use my mistake as a lesson to always give yourself slack and now you know you don't really have to do the grounds but you should always do them anyway regardless everything should just have electrical tape on it you, know, you want to be safe You know, let's say there is a short in the ground, and the ground pops out of the thing, and you have voltage going through a ground wire, and then it, sh and then it uh, livens up the box. You never know. You just never know, and you just always want to take precautions. Now, also, I'm going to bring this camera over real quick. The ground screw is grounded to the box right there, and it's also grounded to the switch. So the box is grounded. The only thing that isn't is this. This is BX cable that should always have a shield on it right there. In New York City, the code is uh, BX cable under six feet can be exposed. I asked an electrician, maybe he was wrong, but that's what I've heard. Anything over six feet uh, can be out in the open, like so, because BX is not supposed to be exposed. Yep, it's already in the switch, so I'll put my little black tab here, which is an insulator, just in case of stray voltage. Again, anything like that. All right, push our wire nuts back in, in the box. And I'll 
don't mind that. It's just the guys fooling around. Let me get the bottom screw in. This can be a little tricky. Make sure that ground is pushed back there. Okay, and we're going to put this switch back in now. See the little black insulator? You should always have those as well. Alright, switch it back in now. We'll put the plate on and we'll fire it up. So, the switch is back together. Now, plug her in, and fire her up. So now we have power here, and uh, there you go. Now it's running. Now it's off. So, again, the switch is cutting the hot leg of the power. And it's preventing it from starting. When I put the switch in, little tongs click in and allow power to flow through and go right to the fan motor to power the fan. So, that is how to wire a single pole switch. I thank you for watching and mic out.